Teresa. And I'm Sinclair. And we're, we're the, the Sweetest, sweetest solvers. solvers. We're sweet mates living on campus with a deep interest in mystery. In this series, we'll be covering everything from crime, murder, and conspiracies to the supernatural. In this week's episode, we'll be talking about the Norwegian black metal band Mayhem and their gruesome background, as well as Larry Eiler, American serial killer. So, Larry Eiler, big scary man. But how did he get so big? A lot of the times it's nature versus nurture. Are people born evil or were they just like brought up to be evil? Who knows? Mm -hmm. So this kid was raised by an alcoholic father, youngest of four, right? And um, you know, his mother wasn't really there because after they got the divorce, she was always working these jobs and then she kept remarrying. Or she kept remarrying alcoholic, abusive men. I don't know, I guess she had a type, I don't know. But like, he ended up having to go into foster care with his sister. And he did know that he was homosexual. He came out to his family, but he was in denial. He did not want to tell anybody else. He was in Catholic school and then he went to, um, he got sent to those schools for like problematic children. They were like, yeah, this kid's bad. And basically just handed him back to his family. Like, okay. So like as he was growing up, he was like dating girls in high school and like, you know, he didn't get physical with them basically. When he, he didn't even graduate high school, he got his GED. So like, I guess that's pretty good, good for him. Uh, <laughs> uh, but uh, that's it. He like later got a job as a security officer at a hotel and then he got a job at like some shoe store after he got fired. And then, um, I don't know, he started going to a lot of nightclubs, like a lot of gay clubs, mm -hmm. mingling with the guy, having a private session with another man. Um, he would like beat them and like call them names that, you know, they're pr pretty nasty names. Usually they're used towards women too. So, oh, and he also was like reported to never make eye contact. So like beating them up, not looking at them and calling them like mean names aimed at women. People think that he was trying to pretend he was a woman. Kind of uncomfortable. No, we're not kink shaming over here. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he had a lot of kinks, I guess you could say. Like he was into like leather and masochism, sadomasochism and like no consent, I guess you could say. Um, but yeah, and then he just started picking up hitchhikers and this is like when he started murdering, mm -hmm. okay? He murdered 21 young male adults and teenagers, like, and he got arrested twice. The first time he was arrested, they said it was a legal, illegal arrest because he was originally arrested for some traffic violation and then they found a lot of things in his car that might have linked him to a murder and then I still don't get it I don't understand why they would have released him but they did and then he killed another man and then he got arrested a second time and was sentenced to lethal injection but then he died before he could even receive lethal injection due to AIDS complications Tragic. <laughs> and try you know what that reminds me of? What's that thing? What was that guy in the 70s and he like killed like mad young girls? Ted Bundy? Yeah, that's what that reminds me of. Yeah. Uh, yes, he's kind of similar to Ted Bundy in the sense he would chop up his victims. Right. He would. <laughs> I didn't even know you did all that. Oh, yeah. And I was like, oh, this bad boy. Mm -hmm. you know, no, he would like chop them up, rape the, the works, just every bad thing you could possibly imagine, beat them. There was one person that he stabbed like, I think 32 times and four of those times was into the skull. What was game? I understand, all right, I don't understand like what is game between like, I mean, behind um, I think sadomasochism, so whatever. Sadomasochism. That. And, but like, if <laughs> the whole like beating them and calling them names, we normalize that in like heterosexual practices. But like, why? Why was that? 
a concern for people. Like, unless, like, as long as... Con- he as wouldn't a- even look at his partner. He wasn't comfortable. <laughs> if you're not comfortable, don't do it. You know? Yeah, I guess. I don't know. I feel like if you're... Ah, I don't that's just be, a lot. I don't want to excuse him or defend him or anything like that, but, like, I just feel like... You're defending the serial no. killer? <laughs> <laughs> did, he, did they even like be like, oh, does he have any like uh, mental illness problems? No, they did know he had mental illness, and that was when he went into that um, school that was just for like troublesome kids. They basically said that he had severe detachment, like fear of detachment, and like um, what's the word? What's the word I'm looking for? Abandonment. Hmm. Severe fears of abandonment, and they. I feel like the system failed them. Because it's not like it fails a lot of kids, if you think about it. Yeah. And then they wait till they act out and go ballistic to arrest them. Like, every single them. time you hear about a school shooting or like, well, I'm not, I'm, I don't know why I'm doing this. They actually happen. Every time you hear about a school shooting or something like that, the first thing you hear about is the shooter's mental health and how they were in class. And even Larry Eiler, they said, um, Uh, his teacher said that he was quiet in class, uh, reserved, had very few friends, and his um, he got bullied a lot because his parents were divorced and he was poor, but he was like really tall. He was so tall. So you would think everyone would want to be his friend because you know, he's tall. He doesn't want to be a tall kid's friend. But no, his sister, his older sister, had to come to his defense when a lot of these kids were making fun of him. Um, you know? That's tough. That is tough. I mean, if the kid's growing up bullied and all that, all he knows is people are mean, then he's not going to act in any other way but mean. Mm. Mm. It's just tough. So next story. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, I, did you want to talk more? I just that? thought you had something to respond to that. I mean, I just gave you this... I don't know. I just feel like it's... It's not more, and it's nothing more than just the system feeling people for what's new. Um, All right, yeah. So, I, in fact, I actually stayed up Sunday night till like probably 4 a.m. researching this story because it was really crazy. Like, okay. So, this band was formed in Oslo, Norway in 1984 by Oystein uh, Arseth. I don't know if I'm saying it wrong. I try to pronounce it, like find pronunciations, but he's also known as Hieron- he's better known as Hieronymus. And Hieronymus was a very dark character. He well not character, just he had a dark character. And he just was obsessed with like making sure the band uh what's it called? Like lived up to its image. Like he wanted everything to match his image. It's one thing to like sing about you know, murdering people and blood and suicide and all that stuff. But it's one thing to actually do it. And he was doing it. He was like making sure the band went out and burned churches down because he practiced Satanism and all that. Uh, he, um, so he formed the band, however they need a uh, vocalist. So then they found um, Dead, from his name is Dead, from Sweden. That's not his real name, that's just his stage name. I don't know how to say the real name, so we're just not gonna say it. We're gonna um, call him Dead. <laughs> yes. Um, so Dead is also a very dark character. He's obsessed with death. He because he knew he was gonna die, and he always would like cut himself on stage and sprinkle the blood on the crowd <laughs> and throw glass shards on the crowd and stuff like that. He would even bury his clothes to like fulfill his like dead image. He would bury his clothes and then the night of the show he would dig them up and put them on so he looked like he was risen from the dead and uh, eventually oh also leading up to his death in 1991 Euronymous would often like encourage him to kill himself He'd be like oh it'll just all go away if you just killed yourself just for the just for the sake of the image of the band so dead eventually killed himself in 1991 he slit his wrist and his neck and that wasn't working so then he shot his uh he shot himself in the head with a shotgun because um in his suicide letter he was like oh sorry for the blood but it was mad cold in here and <laughs> it just wasn't working like the blood kept clotting so he was not gonna die so he just hurried and sped up the process so then um Euronymous found him 
took a picture with him with, with a disposable camera and um, used it as an album cover like a year after. I don't know. He, he wasn't even phased by it. Yeah. And he was like, there was uh, allegations that he made stew with his brain and he um, took skull fragments and made necklaces. They were, both of those um, accusations were like, like the band was like, no, he didn't do that. And then eventually the band was like, no, nah, he did the, the second thing. He, he did make <laughs> necklaces. He did one of those things. <laughs> Get it right. <laughs> exactly. And he made necklaces and gave them to like other black metal artists that he deemed worthy. And everybody was like, you're being a weirdo, bro. In fact, it was sold on eBay. A piece was sold on eBay for like 3500 recently. I don't know what you would gain out of buying that. But anyway. Um... Then, uh, Necro Butcher, one of, I think he was the drummer of the band, he was like, you're being crazy, you're bugging out, and he left. So, the thing with Euronymous is like, if someone died or left, he would just be like, all right, and just recruit different people. It, it wasn't even whatever. And like, Euronymous was like, oh, he's um, dead, killed himself, just so like, Black Metal would... <coughs> like keep his name of being black metal and dark and whatever because he thought it was becoming trendy and commercial commercialized so he was like it needs to go back to like its origin like dark so um eventually fast forward <coughs> um varg viernet vikernes varg we're gonna call him varg um varg. yes he was a replacement i think of i don't remember who he replaced but he replaced somebody. And then Varg was like, they started having, um, Varg and Yorana started to con have com conflicts and whatever. 1993, um, Var um, Yorana, I mean, yeah, Varg went to Yorana's place for, to sign like some contract or whatever. And they had like a big argument and Varg was under the impression that Euronymous was gonna kill him just for show, like just to make a big old story out of it, just like he did with Dead. Like, yeah. so Varg was like, "You're not about to do this to me." He thought he was gonna kill him and videotape him and release it, but he's like, "You're not gonna do that to me. I'll do it, do it to you before you do it to me." So he stabs him like 23 times, and he dies, obviously. You're lying. Yes. You can, in fact, watch this movie called <laughs> Lords of Chaos. That's why I used your Hulu account to watch. It you was my Hulu account. <laughs> it was so bad. It was bad because the people you were... <laughs> the people, the actors were American. And this is a Norwegian band. Like, no action, no nothing. It, it was no... Yeah. It was just, um, it was just like, it was... Meta wait, Metallica from America? Yes. <laughs> it was like a Metallica or something. Like... You didn't wow. even try. Anyway, so yeah, he killed him. <laughs> Tragic. And <laughs> um, after that, like the band just started to be like, all right, this is just a waste of time. Did he go to prison? Did oh yeah, he got sentenced. <laughs> he got sentenced to 21 years in prison, which was the max in Norway for murder and arson because not to be burned down the churches and whatnot. So, but he ended up only serving 15 years in prison. And now he lives in France with his wife and kids. And um, in a recent interview with Necro Butcher, the one that left because Dead was doing too dang much. Way really too much. Um, he was like, if Var didn't do it, I was gonna do it. Cause I was like, but do you think that Dead? I guess the question here is, do you think that Dead was like had it coming for him? Or do you think like everybody was just doing too much? Dead, the guy who killed himself. I mean, no, Euronymous. <laughs> Did Euronymous <laughs> deserve to go to prison? Yes. yes. <laughs> he was the cause of burning down churches. No way. <laughs> I'm so confused. <laughs> Euronymous no. was the one that was killed by Varg. Oh, no. Okay. Okay. I think I messed up the story a little bit. I'm so oh. confused. <laughs> All these names I've never even heard before. Okay. Okay. Uh, and I don't even know this band. I don't know if their music's any good. 
you listen to it. I tried. At first, when they first came, remember, um, they didn't have a vocalist, so it was just instrumental, and it was just uh, loudness. And then when um, Dead came, it was still loudness with screaming. So it's just not my cup of tea. And Euronymous was the next vocalist after. He was so <laughs> no. confused. I did not say all that. He was just, a, he played the guitar. Do you think he deserved it? When I'm watching the movie, I kind of feel bad because I feel like Barb, him stabbing him 23 See, times. I didn't even watch this movie, which you <laughs> used my account to watch. <laughs> you, okay, you gave it to me. It's not like I just stole it. But anyway, um, <laughs> I don't know. When I watch the movie, I kind of feel bad. I feel like in. <laughs> I feel like movies, you always feel worse about the people that you, you read about because you could see them and like you could see their emotions and all that. It's more personal, you know? Yeah. When you see it, like an actor. When you're reading about it, it's like, mm, that's, mm, like, you know, like, oh, I don't really care that much. That's interesting, I guess. Yeah, when I'm reading, I'm like, why do, Why was he doing all that just for the band? Only for the band. I mean, the band is still up, but, like, there's, like, only... The band two, still exists? Yeah, but only two people, like, two original people are there. Like, why does this band still exist? I don't know. But remember that time when I was watching something and I had zoomed up on one guy? Yes. That was when, that's what I was watching. <laughs> So, <laughs> um, I didn't listen to her new music. I'm I like metal music and I like hard rock and stuff like that. But that is not that's too much. Good. I don't listen to that hard rock stuff. Give me that good alternative indie. You're bugging. Like Slip. I wish like I was trying to find more bands like Slipknot or something. But like everyone is doing too just, much. You it's can't just replicate screaming. a band. That's and, the thing. Yeah, and like. The thing with like black metal, they talk a lot about, you know, illegal things and like rape, murder and all you that can't. stuff. Yeah. No. And I was like, <laughs> if you ever listen to like Ty the Creator's old stuff, it is the same thing, but he's rapping. And I don't want to say like, oh, it's better because he's rapping, but like. Well, what about that guy who did that song? Like, when I wake up in the morning, I got murder on my mind. Oh, yeah. That was an actual plan to kill his friends. Yeah. He got arrested for that. But I just feel like when black metal does, like black metal artists do, it's like you're doing a lot. Like they would talk about killing somebody and then having their way with their body. Like, what do you gain? I don't think that that's what they actually did, but no. Well, I don't know. But why are you gonna sing about something that you don't do? Yeah, you know, I miss the days when music was just. <laughs> Miss <laughs> the days? I don't know. I don't remember these days. I don't think I existed during the days when when. So you're like you're like a forty six year old. I am. Man. <laughs> I'm old. I'm older than you. I'm your superior. Like two. Wait. I'm nineteen. What's your birthday again? September seventh. Oh yeah. Yeah. Nice. 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 Yeah. I just. All in all, in conclusion, I don't understand murderers. And I don't, I don't think I ever that. will. But I still think it's interesting, like, what, what triggers them in their mind that they're like, we have to do this. You know? Yeah. I feel like even if someone was assaulting me, I'd have a hard time killing them. Ah. You know? But, however, this sounds bad, but... <laughs> you, oh my goodness. You ever been in the parking lot in the grocery store? Every, yo, I'm so bad at parking, like pulling out from the grocery store parking lot because people would just be walking like it's nobody's business. Mm -hmm. Like, you're not invinci invincible. I would, and they walk so close to your car. Exactly. For no I was like, reason. if I ever hit somebody, it's none of my business. <laughs> I'm so serious. Unless it's a child, but like, somebody's dad. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> That's all You should have watched your kids. Right, exactly. That's awful. Thank you for watching. Make sure to tune in. We'll hopefully be doing this as an every other week thing. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Bye.